Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-aliyyil azim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina abil qasim al-mustafa Muhammad. Allah Alhamdulillah. First, I offer my condolences to you and all believers to also Imam of our time. Imam Mahdi Jalallahu Ta'ala Fawadu Sharif. Tonight, inshallah, I will share with you uh, some points about the relation between Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Quran. Uh, unfortunately, recently we have seen some disrespectful actions towards the Quran uh, in some countries, although it has not been done by many people, but even if few individuals do such things, it's very uh, sad. Uh, even if we were not Muslims, you know, we would not find this acceptable, uh, let alone we are believers in the Prophet and the Quran. And I think our best, um, the first, you know, reaction should be to renew our relation with the Quran, to give more attention to the Quran, and the second then would be, you know, respond to such acts in a wise way. But we need to understand why some people cannot see Quran being followed by millions and hundreds of millions of people. So what I want to share with you is to see how much the Prophet was uh, connected with the Quran, how much he was respecting the Quran, loving the Quran, and also emphasizing on reference to the Quran and acting upon the Quran, and everything which is related to that, even looking at the Quran, carrying the Quran. To begin with, I like to start with this ayah which uh, since uh, maybe it was 15 years ago or, or about that, that I was teaching some uh, people in Qom and we were talking about the light, concept of light, this ayah uh, uh, stood out for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that all divine books are illuminating as you know this is what we find about all divine books for example in surat al imran 184 allah says if they rejected you this is not me. Messengers before you were also rejected. They brought clear signs and illuminating book, Al Kitab al Munir. So every book is illuminating. In particular, then Quran refers to Torah being a book of light and Injil and the Quran. So all of them are generally illuminating and as examples, emphasis is put on Torah and Injil and the Quran. For example, about Torah, we have in Surah Ma'id, verse 44, Inna anzalna Torah fiha hudan wa nur. 
we send down Torah, there is guidance and light in Torah. Surah An'am 91, also Allah says, in the middle of the ayah, قُلْ مَنْ أَنزَلَ الْكِتَابَ الَّذِي جَاءَ بِهِ مُوسَى نُورًا وَحُدًا Who sent down the book that Musa brought? Musa brought, but someone else has sent this book down. This book is not from this world. Musa has not brought it himself. Allah sent it down to Musa. But this book is Nuran Wahuda, is light and guidance. Or also about Angel, Ma'ida 46, Allah says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ Angel فِي هُدًا وَنُورًا We get Jesus Angel, there is light and guidance in Angel. So, Torah has light and guidance, Angel has, and Quran. There are several verses. I have five verses in which the light of Quran is directly mentioned, in addition to the general things about all the books. For example, in Surah Ma'idah, verse 15, Allah says, At the end, قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ وَكِتَابٌ مُبِينٌ a light and clear book has come to you. And the ayah is addressed to the people of the book. It starts with Ya Ahl al Kitab. So Quran is light, and therefore those who follow previous books like Torah and Injil, if they have reached the depths of it, they must find it uh, very similar to that because it's all a matter of light and guidance. Surah Nisa 174. Ya ayyuhan nas Now this is not just Ahlul Kitab This is Ya ayyuhan nas Qad ja'akum burhanun min rabbikum Wa anzalna ilaykum nooran Mubina Quran is clear light So it is Kitab Mubin And Noor Mubin Quran is clear book And clear light And we have Surah Taqabun verse 8 And Surah Shura verse 52 you can inshallah read it yourself. But what stood out for me is surat. All of them are of course outstanding, but especially for the you know understanding the Prophet and his relation with the Quran is the verse 157 of Surah Al Araf. This ayah is very important for uh, understanding methods of Tabligh also. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Al-lazina yattabi'oon ar-rasool al-nabiyy al-ummi. Those who follow the messenger, the prophet, who is ummi. Either in the sense that he is from Ummu al-Qura, from Mecca, or he is un-schooled, has not gone to a school for learning. الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل. They find him introduced in Torah and Injil. So he's prophesied in both Torah and Injil. What does this prophet do? If you want to summarize the mission of the prophet. This ayah says, يَأْمُرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنَهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ He asked them to do the good things. Uh, tell them not to do bad things. Ma'ruf and munkar here are not ma'ruf and munkar in the uh, fiqhi sense. Because this is for the beginning. This is what... People with their common sense, with moral conscience, they could understand. Islam was an invitation to go back to fitrah. And those things which are acceptable to your fitrah, you do it. Those which are not acceptable, you leave it. The same thing is explained in this way. Those things which are tayyab, pleasant, are permissible. Those things which are not pleasant, they are prohibited. 
Of course, then Sharia comes and uh, shed more light and we can go into more details. There are things that at the surface everyone understands. There are things that we need more light and more guidance. But to begin with, what Rasulullah was saying in Mecca was mostly some moral instructions after Tawheed, not to kill people, not to commit theft, not to do adultery, not to tell lies, were very simple legislations were normally introduced in Medina. It was a matter of ma'roof and munkar in this sense. And something else, which is very important, this prophet has come to liberate you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to the people who were chained up by superstitious ideas, by slavery, by polytheism, by ignorance. So they were not able to move as free and noble human beings. They were like people who were in prison. Rasulullah came to free them and open all these ch chains and all these locks which are put on them. Then Allah says, فَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِهِ those who believe in him and support him and help him now we reach that sentence that i want you to pay lots of attention those who believe in the prophet and supported him and helped him and follow the light which is sent with him, sent down with him. These are the people who would be happy. They have happiness, they have salvation. Inshallah, I hope we can be included among the people who believe in the Prophet, support him, and follow the light which is sent down to him, which is the Quran. This is the key to falah and salvation. Those who know Arabic, they know that onzila is used with ela. Okay? Enzal means sending down. When Allah sends down, sends down the book to a messenger. For example, sends it to Musa, sends it to Isa, the prophet. It should be mentioned that unzila ilai nur alladhi unzila ilai they follow the light which was sent down to the prophet to deliver it to people but here it says unzila ma'ahu the light which is sent down with him not to him this shows that the relation between the prophet and the Quran is not just a receiver of a message who has no role, just he receives and his role starts afterwards in delivery. No, the Prophet and the Quran have ma'iyya. The Prophet and the Quran are closely connected with each other. Of course, Muslim mystics have, you know, uh, very important discussions here even they believe that it was the prophet who brought the quran down so they believe in this idea that the prophet brought the quran down otherwise the quran was not coming down it's the soul of the prophet and his cash his way of unveiling the reality is the most complete one. We don't want to go to that discussion, but just what we can understand very simply from the Quran is that there is a close relation between the Prophet 
and Quran didn't come to a person who is unfamiliar. This light of the Quran didn't come to a person who didn't have light. There is close relation, there is close harmony between the Prophet and the Quran. Uh, one uh, of the wives of the Prophet was asked about Prophet's character, as you know. And she said, Kana Quran. The Prophet's akhlaq was the Quran. This is one way of understanding this fact, but it's more than that. Not only his akhlaq was Quran, his aqaid was Quran, his way of thinking was Quran, his emotions, his feelings, everything was in maximum unity with the Quran. And then among the prophets and messengers in the Quran, there is no direct reference to them being themselves light. Although we know they all have light, we know believers have light. But there is no direct reference except for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is in famous verses of Surah Al Ahzab. Ya ayyuhan nabi, inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadiran wa da'iyan ila Allah bi idnihi wa sirajan munira. So Rasulullah, as I said, it doesn't mean the rest were not light, but maybe the light was less. There is no emphasis on that. But Rasulullah has so much light that Allah says, we have sent you as Siraj Munir, as illuminating lantern, light. So Quran is sent to someone who has the light. So this is then light over light. This is Nuron ala Nur. Now you can understand why Rasulullah was so much attached to the Quran. Rasulullah had greatest love for the Quran. No one loved the Quran. No one appreciated the Quran like Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. To the extent that Allah says to the Prophet, "Ma anzalna alayka al-Quran al tashqa Because Rasulullah was so much you know, attached to the Quran and reading Quran, reciting the Quran and standing on his toes and feeling very sad why people don't appreciate the Quran. He was putting lots of pressure on himself and feeling feel himself responsible for anyone who didn't believe in the Quran. He was feeling very sad, feeling terrible from inside. So Allah says, we didn't send down the Quran to you so that you have difficulty and you know you suffer you know that how rasulullah used to divide the night into different portions and recite the quran in the night during the day every time possible he was reciting the quran and also interestingly he loved to listen to the quran It is narrated that Rasulullah said to Ibn Mas'ud, read the Quran. He said, Quran has been sent down to you. Should I read for you? Rasulullah said, I love to listen also to the Quran. And Rasulullah is a good role model for us. So he recited and he listened to, and this shows that we should also listen to the Quran. And also, in the month of Ramadan, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, according to some hadith, <coughs> used to have a discussion with Jibrail, like you know, reading uh, the Quran for each other. Now I want to share with you some hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the Quran. <laughs> In a hadith which is 
narrated by Sheikh Kulaini in Al Kafi. And inshallah, I hope all our homes can be like this. In Al Bayt, Eda Kathura fi Tilawatul Quran, Kathura Khayro. When there is a house in which recitation of the Quran is frequently taking place. This house with the same size, with the same design, the same material, the same location, okay? This is the physical side of it. But depending on those who live in this house and what they do in this house can have more baraka or less baraka, can have more light or less light. If Quran is frequently recited in a house, kathura khayro, then goodness of this house will increase. So if you want to have a happy life, if you want to be successful in your life, if you want to be successful in upbringing your children, if you study at home, if you work at home, anything that you do in that home will be blessed more if more Quran is recited in that house. And the household of that house will have more space, more uh, rest, and maybe more comfort. You know, we see a stars in the sky shining. Yeah, we all enjoy looking at the light of the stars. Rasulullah says, when you recite in your house the Quran, then your house will shine for the people of heaven. Like a stars which shine for the people of the earth. Also, there is hadith, very famous hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Khiyarukum man ta'allama al-Qur'an wa allamahu. The best of you are those who learn the Quran and teach the Quran. So this should be our response to whoever disrespects the Quran. To teach our children, to teach ourselves more the Quran and spread this knowledge and act upon the Quran. Uh, there is a hadith which says, Mu'min should not be dying except Either he is teaching the Quran or learning the Quran. You should be in one of the two conditions. And you know these go hand in hand. You never uh, stop learning. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, In aratum aisha su'ada. وَمَوْتَ الشُّهَدَى وَالنَّجَاتَ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَى وَالذِّلْ يَوْمَ الْحَرُورَ وَالْهُدَى يَوْمَ الظَّلَى If you want your life be life of those who have sa'ad, those who are fortunate, those who have happiness, felicity, yeah, sa'id. If you want your life be a very happy life, and if you want to die like martyrs, and if you want to be saved on the day of hasra, the day that is the day of regret, why we didn't do well. <coughs> and if you want shadow on the day of heat, day of judgment. And if you want guidance on the day of misguidance, when people are going astray, if you want guidance, Fadrusul Qur'an. The key to reach all these things is to study the Qur'an. 
فَإِنَّهُ كَلَامُ الرَّحْمَانِ This is the word of Allah. وَحِرْزٌ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ And a protection from Satan. وَرُجْحَانٌ فِي الْمِيزَانِ And also will give you weight on your scale. Because this scale has to go down. مَنْ ثَقُلَّتْ مَوَازِنُ One of the things that can make your scale, inshallah, heavy, is to study the Quran. <laughs> Another hadith: Ma jalasa qawmun fi majlisin min masajid Allah. يتلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيتهم الرحمة وحفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده Very beautiful There is no group of people who sit in one masjid They sit in masjid but instead of speaking, you know, looking at, I don't know, their messages, texts, whatever, what they do, yatluna kitab Allah wa yatadarasunahu baynahum. They recite the Quran and discuss with each other. They do mubahasa of Quran. They reflect together on Quran. No group of people. So, this is inclusive. Unless they do it without sincerity, you know, if there is a problem, that's another issue. Otherwise, this has this power. Unless Nazalat alayhim sakina tranquility and peace comes down to them. Quran is the way to receive peace. As we talked in the months of Ramadan, we had you know discussion about inner and outer peace. Rahma and mercy of Allah will cover them. They will be covered because Quran is Rahma. Quran Word of Rahman is Rahma. <laughs> yeah? So it's not surprising. And then this will attract angels. Angels also will surround them. And what is amazing is Then Allah remembers them in the circle of those who are in Allah. Those who are very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Muqarrabun, whether they are angels who are muqarrab or some human beings who are muqarrab, like martyrs, they are in the Allah. Yeah, لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أنواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم. If you study the Quran, there are certain verses about الذين in the Rabbik, those who are end of your Lord means close to your Lord. So Allah will remember them. With those who are very close to him, such people. And this is just some sample. We have many, many hadith about emphasis on the Quran, respecting the Quran. And one of the most important instructions of the Prophet, as you know, is he said to all Muslims. For sure, the Prophet didn't mean just to print the Quran, to, you know, keep the Quran at your home, or to kiss the Quran only. The Prophet meant that you should act according to the Quran, and should act according to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, to love the Quran and not follow it, or to love Ahlul Bayt and not follow them, would that be enough? So, I hope we show our gratitude to all the 
sacrifices of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. By appreciating more the gift of the Quran and Ahlul Bayt salam, these two important things that he left for us, inshallah. I would like to uh, end with some poems about tonight, which is the night of the 28th of Safar and demise of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The poet says, I thought months of Safar is going to end and we will have no more suffering. You know, months of suffer is a sad month, generally. And so this is very last part of the month. So the idea is that there was hope that there would be no more tragedy in this month. Goftam ke omre maahe safar rube akhirast. Didam shuru e mahshar kubrai diyaras. But to my surprise, I saw that actually we have a new resurrection at the end of Safar. One of the greatest tragedies is this tragedy because, as Amirul Mu'min alayhi salam said when he was burying Rasulullah by demise of prophet something stopped that had never stopped and that is Nubuqva. revelation stopped up to the 28th of Safar humanity had the blessing of receiving revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through 124,000 prophets but Rasulullah who is Khatamun Nabiyyin his demise marked the end of revelation. Gardun shot siyah hu faza por zedud ah. Tarik tarz arse ye tarik mahsharas. The sky has become black. The air is full of smoke. It has become even darker than the day of resurrection gar malal bar rukh islam gar de malal bar rukh islam o muslimin ashk azab dide zahra athar islam and muslims are in mourning the tears of mourning are on the face of fatima to zahra گفتم چه روی داده که زهرا زند به سر I asked what has happened that the lady Zahra is beating on her head دیدم که روز روز ازای پیانبه است Then I saw that this was the day of departure of the Prophet پایان عمر سید و مولای کائنات آغاز دور قربت زهرا و حیدر است End of life of the master of creation is beginning of the era in which Lady Fatima and Amir al will suffer loneliness They will be like strangers in their own city قرآن غریب و Fatima is a stranger. Quran is a stranger. Quran itself says that Rasulullah on the Day of Judgment will complain. Ya Rabbi, inna qawmit takhadu hadha al-Qur'ana mahjura. Oh Allah, my nation in general, there are exceptions, but in general they have 
abandoned the Quran. But what do you think Rasulullah would say about Ahlul Bayt? Would he say, no, Alhamdulillah, if they abandoned the Quran, at least they respected my Ahlul Bayt? No. I think even he would not say they abandoned the Quran and they abandoned Ahlul Bayt. No. I think he would say they abandoned the Quran and they killed Ahlul Bayt. They sent him to exile Ahlul Bayt. Qutil man qutil wa subiya man subi wa uqsiya man uqsi. The way Ummah treated Ahlul Bayt is worse than the way they treated the Quran. Therefore, he says, Quran gharibu fatime az an gharib tar. Quran is like a stranger, unfortunately. If you look at life of Muslims, how much of our life is according to Quran? How many percent, how much you know, we follow the Quran? But Lady Fatima is even treated with less reverence. Islam ra siyah betan khak bar saras. Islam, like a person who is in mourning, has black dress and has dust on head. Ruy Hussein mande be divar bi kasi. Cheshme Hassan be ashke do cheshme barad barast. Not only Amirul Mu'minin and Lady Fatima are tonight mourning, but their children, Imam Hussein, is crying next to a wall. Imam Hassan is crying. Eidel biya geriye Zainab nezar kun. Manand pirohan jagar khish khar kun. Also let us look at Lady Zainab. Maybe tonight is the beginning of suffering of Lady Zainab. Because this is the time that loss for Lady Zainab started. First, losing Rasulullah, then illness of her mother, then demise of her mother, then 25 years suffering of Amir al-Mu'mini, then demise of Am martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'mini, Imam Hassan Imam. So this is end of happy life of Lady Zainab. So the poet says, let us look at the cry of Zainab and break our heart with crying for her. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to follow the great example that Allah has given us in Rasulullah and act upon his advice and in particular to show our appreciation for the blessings we have received in the form of the Quran and in the form of Ahlul Bayt. May Allah unite Muslim Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them to share with the people of the world the beauty of the Quran in word and action. May Allah help all people who are suffering. We have people who suffer from earthquake, from flood, from wars, from poverty, from injustice. There are so many different types of suffering in the world. We ask Allah because of Rahmatullah Alameen to have a renewed Rahmah inshallah for our generation and help us from all these different kinds of loss and sorrow inshallah. We ask Shafa for all people who are ill. We request Rahmah and Maghfara for all who have passed away, especially those who have rights upon us. We ask Allah to bless our parents who are alive with health and dignity and those who have passed away. We request Allah to be very generous with them, very kind and forgiving with them. We ask Allah to unite our community everywhere and to bless us with the appearance of Imam Mahdi at Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alam.